Hey guys, welcome to section 3.3 on the slope intercept form of the equation of a straight line. Let's get started. So just as a review from what we did in the previous section, given any two points on a plane, we can always find the slope of the line connecting them. So if we're given two points x1, y1 and x2, y2, we can connect the two dots and make a line between them, a straight line. And the slope of that line can be found by this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is stuff that we've done before. Now, the two points, again, can be used to find the slope of the line connecting them. Those two points are obviously on the line itself. So that's, I mean, if you're making a line passing through these two points, the two points have to be on the line itself. But more importantly, they're solutions to that line, meaning if you were to plug x1 and y1 into the equation of this line, you would get a true statement. If you were to plug in x2 and y2 into the equation of this line, you would get a true statement as well. So now the question becomes, well, how do we find the coordinates of other points on this line that we get by connecting those two dots? And is there a way to generate all other points on this line or all other solutions? So if we were to do this, well, we just know that there's two points on this line and that both of them are solutions. But what if I wanted to find the location of this point? What about this point? What about this point? And all the other points that also happen to be solutions. So in mathematics, we are fundamentally motivated, at least at this level, by wanting to try to solve equations. We want to try to solve equations. And when we solve equations, we get potential solutions, and we verify them to be solutions. So in this case, we have two of them, how is it that we can generate or is there a way perhaps that we can generate all the other solutions or all the other points on the line? The answer is yes, we can actually do both by finding the equation of a straight line, or in this case of the straight line joining those two points. And before we start, on how to find the equation of a straight line, we need to recognize that it comes in three forms. All three equations give the exact same uh, graph when you were to graph them. So if you were to graph an equation that looks like this or is in slope intercept form, the graph of this line will be the same as the graph of this line if the equation were written in point slope form. And finally, if you're given an equation in standard form, which is this, the graph would end up being the same. So it's kind of like eating steak. Now, if you want to have your steak medium rare, that might be one form of eating a steak. If you want it medium, that might be another form of eating the steak, but you're still eating the same cut of meat. You're not all of a sudden turning it into a piece of chicken. And if you want it well done for some reason, well, then you can have it in standard form. So that would be a third form of the same entity. So when we find equations of straight lines, we can answer or we can represent the answer in three forms. We can say, hey, the steak is cooked medium rare, it's cooked medium, or it's well done. But all three are still steak. So when we have equations of straight lines, we can represent the answers in three different forms. They all represent the same information. So a little more about slope-intercept form because that's what this section is on. The slope-intercept form equation or the form is y equals mx plus b. I'm sure you've seen this before. I would caution skipping through this slide because there's going to be other things that maybe you haven't seen before. So when we write the equation of a straight line in slope intercept form, y and x must be variables. Those have to be variables or there must be some variable in place of y and there must be, there must be some variable in place of x. X, remember, is the independent variable or is the input variable. Y is the output variable or the dependent variable. The only two constants in this equation are M, which represents the slope, and B, which represents the y-intercept. Now, I know we haven't found or we haven't really talked about the y-intercept yet, but we will very soon. So slope we can find by using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We've done this before. And remember that it's a constant, it's some number. So it might be positive, it might be negative, it might be zero, it might be undefined, it might be some sort of weird fraction, but it's when you write the equation of a line, it 
the m or the slope must be a constant. And the y-intercept can be found by setting x equal to 0. So in this equation, let's do that. If x is replaced by 0, regardless of what m is, m times 0 would simply be 0. And then you're just left with y equals b, because this term would just cancel out. Multiplication by 0 would turn this term into a 0. So we find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. And the coordinates are always, if x is 0, whatever you're left with here, we call that the y-intercept. And again, this is a constant as well, because b is going to be a number. It cannot be a variable. A couple other things that I want you to note that are implicit here, but not explicitly written in any textbook. Notice that the y is by itself. On one side of the equation, there is a constant times x, and then there's a number free floating by itself. Now this number may or may not be there. That's not an issue or that's not a concern. But for an equation to be in slope intercept form, the y needs to be by itself on one side. And notice that I didn't write 3y or ay, meaning that it could have a coefficient. It cannot have a coefficient. The y must stand alone by itself. So actually, I'm going to talk about that later. So here are a couple of examples of equations that are in slope intercept form. Again, notice that y is isolated. It's by itself. And when the equation is in slope intercept form, we can find a couple of things about it just by looking at the, the line itself or the looking at the equation itself. The first thing we can do is actually find the slope. Remember, slope was the coefficient of the input variable or the independent variable. So the coefficient of the independent variable here is 3. Therefore, the slope of this line is 3. Not only that, we can actually find out what the y-intercept is. The y-intercept is 0, 4, because b is 4. The same thing here. Because this line is in slope-intercept form, I know that my slope is 2. I know that my y-intercept is 0, negative 7 thirds, because that's what b is. Remember that the sign goes with the number, or with the constant. This equation is also in slope-intercept form, so I know that my slope is 5 fourth, because that's the coefficient of the input variable and my y-intercept is going to be 0, 6. Finally, if I have this equation, the slope is negative 3 over 8, and the y-intercept will be 0, comma, negative 5 over 12. Now, these are examples of lines that are not in slope-intercept form. Some of them might be in point-slope form. Some of them might be in standard form. We'll talk about those in future sections. But for now, I want you to observe that y is not isolated. It is not by itself here. Now, can you get the y by itself? Absolutely. You just do the inverse operation for 2. You divide it over to the other side. Can we get the y by itself here? Sure. We could add the y over to the other side and subtract the 10 over, or subtract the x and then divide both sides by negative 1. There, there's a whole bunch of different ways to accomplish this. So frequently, if someone says, you know, change this to slope-intercept form, what the question is essentially asking is, give it to us so that it looks like this, so that the y is isolated, and then the rest of the other terms are in this order or in this form. Now, hopefully you remember the stuff that we did in chapter 1 and chapter 2. This can be accomplished by simply doing the inverse operations to get y by itself. Section 1.2 was all about solving, for, uh, solving formulas for certain variables. Imagine this to be a formula. It's an equation with multiple variables. So it is, in essence, a formula. And you're just solving for y. So once you've done that, you can turn these equations to look like this. Then they will be in slope-intercept form. So one cautionary tale, students always get a question like this on a midterm. And a frequent question is, what is the slope of this line? And incorrectly, they look at the coefficient of x and say, oh, 4. And that's incorrect. The slope of the line can only be determined if the line is in y uh, equals mx plus b form or it's in slope intercept form. So if y is isolated, then you can look at the coefficient of x and say, oh, that's my slope. Here, y is not by itself, so you cannot tell me what the slope of this line is. Similarly, the y-intercept is not going to be 9 
or 0 comma 9. The y-intercept is going to be something different because the y is not isolated or solved for. So please, please, please keep that as my, keep this or keep that in mind. So we, I introduced intercepts without really talking about them. Intercepts are simply points on the x or y axis where the line crosses the axis. So the x-intercept is the point where the line crosses the x-axis. Hopefully that seems reasonable. And the y-intercept is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. So at, on a graph or on a picture, x-axis, y-axis, we have a line. Hopefully you understand that in order for a point to be on the y-axis, it's not really moving to the left or to the right on the x-axis. So the x-coordinate for any y-intercept, whether it's here or whether it's here or whether it's here, if a point is to be on the y-axis, the x-coordinate must be 0. There is no choice in the matter. It has to be 0. And then whatever the y-coordinate is, that becomes the y-intercept. Similarly, for the x-intercept, if you're saying that there's a point on the x-axis, excuse me, the point is not going up or down. It's just going left or right. So if it's going horizontally, there is going to be some x-coordinate here. It'll just happen to be negative. But the y-coordinate must be 0. There's no choice in the matter. Now, what happens if our input variable is no longer x and our output variable is no longer y? Uh, in this very section, you'll be solving questions where in your input variables and output variables are going to be different letters. So to generalize this argument, instead of just calling this point the y-intercept, in general, we call it the vertical intercept. So whatever the intercept is, wherever the line crosses the vertical axis, whatever the output happens to be, that will be called the vertical intercept. Wherever the line crosses the horizontal axis, that will be called the horizontal intercept. And here's a couple of other examples. So if the horizontal axis is t and the vertical axis is p, this point will be the p-intercept, and the coordinates will be 0, comma p. That will be the vertical intercept in general. Similarly, if we have the t-axis here, we will have the t-intercept being that point where the line crosses the t-axis, but in general, we can call it the horizontal intercept. And one last time, uh, if the output variable remains p, but the input variable is q, then this will be the q-intercept, that will be the p-intercept, in general, vertical intercept versus horizontal intercept. So don't freak out. A vertical intercept simply means find the point where the line crosses the vertical axes. The horizontal intercept simply means find the point on the x-axis where the line touches or crosses it. So up until now, all the graphs that I've shown have had two intercepts, a vertical and a horizontal. That's not always the case. We can have three special cases of lines where there's only one intercept. Or in fact, actually, I lied. There's only one intercept for a horizontal line, because if it's a line that's horizontal, well, it's not going to hit this axis at the same time. Similarly, if it's a vertical line, it's only going to pass through this point on the x-axis, or the input axis, or the horizontal axis. Now, what about a line that passes through the origin? If a line passes through the origin, we say that the x-intercept and the y-intercept are both the same point, 0, 0, or the origin. So here are a couple of common questions that come as a result of this discussion that we've had. So this is stuff we've done before, but this leads us into the question we want to ask. So if we're given two points, find the slope of the line that passes through them. This should be fairly easy and routine at this stage. So all we have to do is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the slope of the line that connects these two points, or the slope of the line that joins these two points, or the slope of the line that contains these two points as solutions is 7 over 3. And also as a reminder, 7 is the change in output, 3 is the change in input, 7 is the rise, 3 is the run using phrases that we learned in the previous section. So the next question we want to ask is, well, what's the equation of this line? And because we're in slope-intercept form, we're going to assume that all the questions we ask in here, we want the equation to be in slope-intercept form. So if we're given these two points, 
from the previous question, and we know what the slope of the line is. Well, we actually have too many points, or we have more points than what we need. So the equation of the line is y equals mx plus b, and what I'm going to do on this slide is use the first point to do my calculations or to find the equation of the line, the first point being 2 comma 3. So I have a y coordinate, it's 3, so I can replace the y with 3. I have a slope, which is 7 third, so I can replace m with 7 third. I have an x coordinate for the same point, 2, so I can replace x with 2, but I don't know what the y intercept is. Now remember, for something to be the y intercept, the y or the x coordinate must be 0. In this case, both points, neither of them has an x coordinate 0, so we don't know what the y coordinate is. And this is something that we need to find. So all we have to do is simplify and solve this equation. Now, given that we've passed chapter 1 and chapter 2, I'm going to let you verify that this indeed does work out. I'm going to skip all the way to the end and say that y turns out to be 7 thirds x minus 5 thirds, because b is negative 5 over 3. This is the equation of the line that connects these two points that has this slope in slope-intercept form. So in slope-intercept form, the equation must always look like y equals mx plus b. y and x must be variables. m and b must be constants, as I mentioned prior. And as we can see here, y and x are variables. The y is isolated. M and, x are, m and b are constants. Now what happens if we do the same exact calculation or computation, but with a second point? Do we get the same line? The answer is absolutely. And hopefully you're predicting that that should be the case. The equation of the line does not change based on which point you pick on it. Because the equation of the line generates all the points on the line. So if we do the same thing, y gets replaced with the y coordinate 10, m gets replaced with 7 third, because that's the slope of the line, x gets replaced with the x coordinate 5, and b is the y intercept. We don't know it. Or let's say that we had never done the computations using the first point, you just started doing this problem using the second point. Again, I'll let you verify that this works out the way it does. And then finally we get y equals 7 thirds x minus 5 thirds, which is the same exact equation we had on the previous slide. 7 thirds x minus 5 thirds, 7 thirds x minus 5 thirds. So again, once we have the slope, all we need is simply one point. We don't need two of them to come up with the equation of the line. Now if we have two, we can either choose the first one or we can choose the second one. And what happens if we have five of them? doesn't make a difference. You can choose the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. It doesn't matter which point you pick. The equation of the line, if you do it correctly, is always going to turn out to be the same. Now, just to graph this so that everyone kind of sees that the what we've found. So 2 comma 3 is right here. 5 comma 10 is right there. And if we connect the two dots, we get this long line. Now, if we were to continue this line all the way here, it would hit at this point which would be called a y-intercept, because that's the vertical axis currently, or that's the label we're using. And for the y-intercept, the x-coordinate must be 0, because we're not going left or right. And negative 5 thirds was, in fact, what b turned out to be. So our graph makes sense, hopefully. Now, how much did the output change by? Well, it changed by 7. So to go from 3 to 10, we have to change the output by 7. And then to go from 2 to 5, we have to change the input by 3. So remember, the change in output is the rise, the change in input is the run. And this is something that we're going to use again and again in the future. So we answered one question. Is there a way to find uh, the equation of a line that generates all possible points? But we haven't found other points on the line yet. So now once we have the equation, if I want to know other points on the line, say three other points on the line, all I have to do is just plug in values for x and solve for y. So if I plug in 1 for x, we get 7 thirds times 1, which is just 7 thirds, minus 5 thirds, which turns out to be 2 thirds. 
Again, I'm welcoming you to verify that these indeed work out the way they do, because these are simple calculations that you'll be required to do on a midterm or an assessment. So the point on this line would be 1 comma 2 thirds. We could do the same thing with x equals 3, we could do the same thing with x equals negative 2, and we get output values from the equation. So we can generate as many points or as many solutions of this line by simply plugging in values for the input variable and letting the function give us values for the output variable. And just to put these on a graph, the same graph as earlier, we had 2 comma 3 and 5 comma 10 in here already. I plugged in the point negative 2, negative 19 over 3 down here. 1 comma 2 thirds is this point. We already had 2, 3. 3 comma 16 over 3 is somewhere here. And then what I mentioned here was that if we wanted to find the coordinates of these three points, we could find all of them by simply using the equation of the line. So hopefully you understand why the equation of the line or finding the equation of the line is so important. Other questions that you might see, or here's an example of one, uh, the question might ask us to find the equation of a line in slope intercept form with this slope that passes through this point. Now again, we've actually answered this question before because we were given two points and a slope. But just for the sake of completeness, let's go through this one. So we start again with the blank canvas, y equals mx plus b, because we want the answer in slope-intercept form. y gets replaced with 7, because that's the y-coordinate. m gets replaced with 3 halves, because that's the slope. x gets replaced with negative 5. And then the question becomes, hey, can you solve for b? This is simply solving a linear equation in one variable. It's a linear equation, or it's an equation because it has an equal sign in it. It's linear because the greatest degree is 1. So this is a linear equation in one variable. One variable because b is the only variable here. So we can solve this using the techniques we learned and practiced in chapter 1 and 2. And then eventually b turns out to be 29 over 2. So the equation of the line, again, as a reminder, in slope-intercept form, y and x have to be variables m and b must be constants. And the slope was given to us as 3 halves, so we didn't have to find it. It was just given to us. We simply needed to find our y-intercept. So that goes here, and this gives us the equation of the straight line that passes through this point and has this slope in slope-intercept form. So once we have the equation of the line in that form, graphing actually becomes easier for us as well. So you can follow these two steps to simply graph the line if you're given the equation of it in slope-intercept form. The first thing you do is you plot the y-intercept or the vertical intercept, because the letters might not be x and y. And then the next thing you do is you plot the next point using the slope, and I'll explain this in a second. All right, so let's take a look at this example. Let's say we have to find the graph of y equals 2x plus 3 using the slope and the vertical intercept, or in this case, the y-intercept. The first step was to find where the y-intercept is. The y-intercept is at 3 because that's what b is. So we put a dot there. And then what we can do is use the slope to find another dot by simply changing the input and the output by the slope. So remember, the numerator of the slope is the change in output. That's how much the rise is. And the denominator, well, 2 is the same as 2 over 1. The denominator is the change in input. That's how much the function changes by on the x-axis. So if it's 2 over 1, that means that the slope changed by, or the y-coordinate changed by 2. So we go up by 2 units. And then the denominator is 1. So we know that we have to go 1 unit to the right. So if this is my first point, another point on this line can be found by simply going up by 2 units and to the right by 1 unit putting another dot here, and then connecting the, the, connecting the dots to create the line. Let's take a look at this one. So we have a similar question, graph p equals negative 3 over q minus 1, negative 3 over 4q minus 1, using the slope and the p-intercept, where p is the dependent variable. Remember, dependent variable is the output variable. 
That means this is kind of like our y, this is kind of like our x, but not really because these are their own separate variables. So we can graph the q-axis, which is the horizontal axis. We can graph the p-axis, which is the vertical axis. We know that the p-intercept is negative 1, so we come down 0, negative 1, which is this is my going to be my first point. And then my slope is negative 3 over 4. That means that my change in output has to be negative 3, which means I have to go down. Had it been positive 3, I would need to go up to change the y value by 3. But if it's negative 3, I need to go down by 3 units. So I'm right here. And then the denominator represents the change in the horizontal axis or the q-axis. So I have to go 4 units to the right. So if I start here, go down by 3, and then go over by 4, that gives me the equation, or that gives me another point. I can connect the two dots and make a line. And that's it. As always, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Have a nice day.